Hey Church, uh, this week we've been learning about the Swedish method of reading the Bible. Uh, and we're doing this to prepare us as we begin to read through the New Testament uh, as a church. Uh, we'll be starting that next week and going throughout the rest of the year. Uh, so far we've looked at three elements. Firstly, the light bulb. What shines out from this passage? Secondly, the question mark. What questions do I have about this passage? And thirdly, the arrow. What is the application of this passage for my life? Uh, if you haven't watched these videos, do yourself a favor, go back and do it. It will be super helpful for you uh, as you approach your own personal Bible reading. Uh, today we're going to look at the final element, and that's the speech bubble. Here we ask ourselves, who would benefit from hearing about this? Who can I tell it to? Now, of course, when you read the Bible, you want to start by thinking about how it applies to you. You don't want to be one of those people saying, oh, gee, it'd be really good if Leon heard this sermon. He really struggles with this issue. Uh, think about how God is challenging you first. But after that, think communally. We are a family. And we should be thinking about how God may use this beautiful truth to bless others. If you have a nice meal, you want to tell people about that restaurant. If you watch a good movie, you want to tell people so they can enjoy it too. If you're blessed by the reading of God's word, then you want to share that truth with others. It may be a non-Christian who needs to hear the truth about Jesus, or it could be a Christian uh, who needs to be reminded uh, of a uh, certain truth that comes from the scriptures. The other day, for example, I read a particular psalm and it had a huge effect on me uh, personally, uh, where I, how I was feeling and where I was at that day. And, and later on that day, I had an opportunity to share that with a Christian friend. Uh, and it was a huge blessing on him too. He said that it changed his day. And you could see immediately the look on his face and in his body language that he felt peace and rest from hearing this verse. It was amazing. It wasn't through clever words of mine. It was just reading simply this one verse from the Bible. God's word's powerful like that, isn't it? So how do we do this? How do we, find, how do we share this truth with someone else? Now, this is a hard devotion to write because it's, it's a pretty easy thing, right? We just tell people. But let's, let's break it down. Firstly, we pray. We pray that God would bring to mind someone that would benefit from hearing this word. And also pray that God will give you a random opportunity throughout your day to share it with someone as well. It's amazing how often what you read in your quiet time in the morning uh, comes into play in conversations later in the day. So pray for those opportunities. Pray that God will bring someone to mind. And then secondly, just tell them. Just tell them. It could be as simple as a text. Just text them the verse or the passage with no commentary added allowing God to speak through his word, or maybe a short explanation as to why you sent this verse to them. Just tell them. So now let's reread Psalm 23. It's the psalm we've been going through all week. And then we'll remind ourselves of the applications Katie shared with us yesterday. And then let's think of what type of people may be in need of hearing such truths. Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So yesterday, Katie, looking at the arrow, drew out four applications to this text, which are really helpful. So let's think about each one and who would benefit. The first application Katie mentioned was steadfastness in all seasons. We're reminded of God's steadfastness in all seasons. So this could be helpful to someone who has gone through through a lot of trauma recently or someone who has a lot of transition in their life and just needs to be reminded of God's steadfastness, his reliability, his never changing nature. The second application was that if you are feeling tired and worn out, you may need to slow down and be refreshed. I'm sure you can think of plenty of people in your life who need a rest, who need refreshment. A truth like this can remind them to come to the great refresher. The third application was that we need to look at how God cares for his sheep. Who do you know who needs to be reminded of the great care of God in their life? 
The fourth application was talking about God should lead us to talk to God. You see in this psalm, he moves from talking about God and towards the end, he's talking to God. So who do you know who is struggling to pray? This could be a great model to them of how to pray through God's written word. As I said, it's not too hard, is it? Whatever you read that day, just take your application that God's telling you for yourself and share that good news with someone else and enjoy the blessing of God's word together. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you that it is living and active, useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Please bring to mind someone I can share your beautiful truth with today. And please give me opportunities throughout the day to share this truth. Amen.